And this is the end result of the unleavened bread for today. And I make unleavened bread every day during the Passover. Um, in, in remembrance of with the Exodus, in remembrance of the Passover celebration. And it'd be good for you to try to do it every day too. Okay, I hope you enjoy. It's really delicious. All praise to the Most High. And we're going to be reading from Leviticus 2, and we're going to start at verse 3. And um, it says, And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. And if thou bring an oblation of a meat offering, bacon in the oven, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mingled with oil or unleavened wafers anointed with oil. And if the oblation be a meat offering, bacon in a pan, it shall be a fine flour unleavened mingled with oil. Thou shalt part it in pieces and pour all thereon. It is a meat offering. And if thy oblation be a meat offering, bacon in a frying pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. And thou shalt bring the meat offering that is made of these things unto the Lord. And when it is presented unto the priest, it shall bring it unto the altar. Okay, and then we're going to fast forward to verse 11. And it says, No meat offering which ye shall bring unto the Lord shall be made with leaven. For you shall burn no leaven, nor any honey, any offering of the Lord made by fire. As for the oblation of the first fruits, you shall offer them unto the Lord, but they shall not be burnt on the altar for his Savior. And listen, and every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. Neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from the meat offering. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. And that was Leviticus 2. And we were reading basically all the way up to 13. We skipped a little bit in between, but that's what we were reading. And that's what we're doing right now. We're making a meat offering, which is the Passover uh, cakes, which is matzah. Some people call them matzah. It's, it's unleavened bread. And unleavened bread is supposed to be the meat offering during the Passover that you're supposed to make every day, every seven days for the Passover and every day of the Passover year to make matzah and make a meat offering and it should have oil, it should have salt, fine flour, and water. You mix it together. Um, you know, like oil, salt, fine flour is how you make it. Okay, and that is the meat offering. And even as we go forward into Leviticus 23, it lets us know that on the 15th day of the same month, we're reading Leviticus 23, verse 6, and on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. So even as we make it, you know, some people are well, reading that we have to have bread or cakes. They figure, well, we just don't have bread for seven days. No. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. So you can't go without eating any bread. You have to have unleavened bread for seven days of the Passover. And it says in Leviticus 23, verse 6, And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no serve our work in And you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. And that offering is the unleavened bread. And we know that Christ, Yeshua, is our bread of life. But do we do this in remembrance of the Passover because it's an ordinance that we're supposed to keep throughout our generation. 
as well. So even Christ said, do this in, in remembrance of me. So this is what we're doing here. So go back to Leviticus 2. You'll understand a little bit more how to prepare that meat offering. And Leviticus 23. And it will give you an idea of what this Passover uh, unleavened bread meat offering is about as you, you reflect upon the past, the present, and the future. And, and Christ Yeshua and the Most High, and what he, what he did, what he's doing, and what he'll do in our lives is day. And I hope that helps you to understand the holiness of this, the sacredness of this, and the beauty of it. And Christ being our bread of life, and Most High has it all in place for us to do everything in remembrance of him and his son, Christ. Yeshaya also known to others as Jesus. He will name Yeshaya. So I hope you enjoy this video as we make the unleavened bread uh, for the Passover. And make it every day. And, you know, you can even have it when, before sundown. You can make it for the Shabbat uh, as your bread. Every offering, meat offering, is not to have leaven. All meat offerings unto the Most High is unleavened. You're never to put un you're never to put leaven in the bread for the Most High. and apart. Contactless, unleavened bread, kosher for Passover and all the Shabbats. And under, it took less than eight minutes to make and could have taken actually less time than that. Um, but this is what it is. You can put it in any shape you like. You can add holes to it if you want to. And But all of it was done without me physically touching the, the flour and bread with my hands because everything was done with the parchment paper. Everything was done with the parchment paper. And now, as I fold it, and this can feed two people, maybe three, but, you know, comfortably it can be two people that like eating a lot of unleavened bread. And it's just a little crisp, so it's best to see those edges turn brown, then you know. And usually when you put it in the oven, you leave it on one side for two minutes or a minute and a half, depending on how hot the oven is. Try to keep the oven at 500 or the highest heat you can get. Most of them are 500. And then after a minute and a half going towards two minutes, you flip it and leave it in there for another minute. And by then you pull it out and it's ready. So on average, it shouldn't be in the oven more than three minutes. Sometime, depending on your oven heat, it could be longer or it could be shorter. But on average, it's three minutes in that oven.
And this was made with six ounces of flour, three tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of coconut oil, a pinch of salt to taste, and must put some salt in it, uh, most high want salt in the meat offering. So a pinch of salt, or it could be a quarter, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt at most. You don't want it too salty, but you want it salted. And the water amount we used was six tablespoons. Okay, give or take, but six tablespoons. You add the tablespoons gradually. So you add two, you stir a little bit, then you add two more tablespoons, stir a little bit, then you add two more. And then by then, it's going to look a little, shall we say, like it's trying to come together. Don't worry, it is coming together. You flip it onto the parchment paper and you start squeezing it with the parchment paper. You do not touch it with your fingers. You let the parchment paper squeeze it. And, you know, you squeeze the parchment paper. And then you put flour on another parchment paper, just a little bit of flour. You place it on there and you put another parchment on top. You start flattening it out into the shape you want, and then you get your rolling pin, and you flatten it out totally as thin as you want, or as thick as you want. Um, I like it closer to the thin side, um, and it's usually easier. It cooks faster too, bakes faster. And there you have it, contactless, unleavened bread. Well, all right, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that you will try it, and you'll like it. So let me know. Give me, if you, if you like it, thumbs up. If you love it, share it. Okay, most high bless. Use six ounces of flour, and I'm going to be getting an eighth teaspoon of salt, but you can season it to your liking. In scripture, the Most High said it's important that meat offerings have salt. So you don't want to use too much salt, but you want to use enough salt to season it. So this is about an eighth. And then you stir it. Right? After you stir it, you add olive oil. In this mixture, because it's six ounces of flour, I'm going to use three tablespoons of salt one tablespoon every two ounces. That should be pretty good. So here's one, here's two, here's three tablespoons of olive oil. I'm gonna stir it a little bit. And then I'm gonna put in a little bit of coconut oil. I think what I'm going to be using, the amount is gonna be a little bit more than a teaspoon, or you could just say a tablespoon. Once I did that, I am going to stir this oil, salt, and flour together. This is a meat offering. This is unleavened bread we're making, and we're going to keep it under eight minutes from start to finish. So I'm stirring that. Now I'm going to add six tablespoons of water, but I'm gonna do it gradually. Two, stir it. Two more. Stir that. Sometimes it's based upon even the flour itself. It's best to use organic, uh, unbleached flour. Here's the other one. That should be enough. And if it feels like it's not, it should have some type of consistency to it. not might add a little bit more because there was flour on this spoon so it might have not been a whole tablespoon of water I can add a little bit more okay. 
Okay. So then the average is like six tablespoons of water, give or take, with six ounces of flour, three tablespoons of olive oil, cold pressed, first pressed is good, and a tablespoon of coconut oil, and of course the salt, you don't wanna leave out the salt. You definitely wanna add the salt. And it could be an eighth of a teaspoon. Now we're gonna put it on the parchment here. Just like this. Try not to squeeze too hard that you don't want to rip a hole in the parchment. But squeeze it hard enough to flatten it out. you would add frankincense, but you don't have to add frankincense all the time to a meat offering, but every meat offering has to have salt. So even if you're on a salt-restricted diet, a little pinch is okay. As long as it has some and salt and everything, but you know, we're making it have a little pinch. Now once you flatten it enough and you've already turned on your oven, your oven should have been on before you started preparing this for at least 15 minutes to get it good and hot. It has to be hot so it'll turn out right at 500 or whatever the highest is on the bake because that way it'll bake properly. Once we get rid of most of the lumps and bumps. If you want, you can poke holes in it. It's not necessary. If you want to do that, you can. I'm not doing that. But if you poke holes, you can use a fork. Okay, so it's just about ready. in the oven. Ideally, it should take two minutes and then you flip it and leave it in for another minute and a half. So we're going to see how this one goes. We're going to open the oven. Go 
close the oven. We'll start counting for about two minutes. Give or take, check. A little bit longer before we flip it. Another half an hour. I mean, another half a minute. Not a half an hour, please. Another half a minute. And then we're going to flip it. Sometimes you don't even need to flip it if it's already ready, but it, it's, it's pretty good to flip it. Sometimes you don't have to. Because it's browning on the edge. Like at this point, it's a toss up whether I flip it or not. But I'm still going to flip it. Just to show you that it's not hard to flip. It seems like it would be, but it's really not. Make sure when you put your parchment paper and your your um, unleavened bread in the oven, it's in the middle of the rack, not too close to the top where the heat is or not too close to the bottom because you don't want the parchment paper to catch fire. You know, so you want to keep it in the middle of the rack away from the heat, but you know, you need to be consistent. And it's coming along very nicely. I like it to get brown on the edges because I like a little crisp going on on the edges of it. Yeah. And so, therefore, I'm just letting it sit here for a second, but I'm about to take it out because it's very brown on the edges. You know, it's not too brown, but it's okay. It's okay. So, I'm going to take that out now. And we see here how it's ready. And we can check the consistency by from six ounces of flour, three tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of coconut oil, about seven tablespoons of water. And we had like a dash of salt, which was an eighth. We put it in and we've done all of this in less than, I believe, uh, from far start to finish in less than 15 minutes and that's the key because anything after 15 minutes will become un will become leavened so we did all this under eight minutes and you want to try to keep it under eight minutes but make sure you don't go past 15 minutes because once you get to 15 minutes your bread is no longer unleavened is becoming leavened it will start rising and so as you can see this has not risen we've kept it within the time frame of under 15 minutes we actually did it in eight minutes and here you have it and then you, you know once it's done you can you can display it but all of this is in leviticus 2 leviticus 23 and this is the meat offering for the Passover feast that you are to make every day during the Passover. You make unleavened bread every day as a meat offering during the Passover. And this is how it's done. All praise to the most high.
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it when you make it. Have a great Sunday. Let me know when you're ready. Very nice. I'm loving. See the flakes? Very nice, I'm loving. You can see the flakes. The recipe will also be in the description. So if you like the recipe, of course, share it and give a thumbs up. Okay. I'll press the most high. Barokata Adonai Eloheinu Baruta Achaya Asher Achaya Bahashem Yishaya Baruch Grace and peace and shalom.